What is going on, Trash Talkers? We're back with another episode for you. In today's video, we're going to give you our predictions for Week 8 in the NFL. All that and much more coming your way right now! Hey Trash Talkers, over 85% of you are still not subscribed to the channel. Please be sure to hit that red subscribe button and turn on notifications as it will help us create more daily content for you. Thank you and enjoy today's video. All right, Nick, week eight in the NFL is here and we start off with a banger on Thursday night football. Get us started. Packers, Cardinals, who you got in this one? Yeah, it's a banger. Or, well, we thought it was going to be a banger until Devontae Adams and Alan Lazard have been ruled out of this contest. They both tested positive for COVID. And we don't even know if the buck stops there. The Packers are in a bad spot right now. And this is not the week for them to have these issues as they are headed to Arizona to face the undefeated Cardinals. It's just going to be a bad week for the Packers. I believe that the Cardinals are humming on all cylinders right now on both sides of the ball. And there really is nothing the reigning MVP Aaron Rodgers is going to be able to do without his partner in crime, Devontae Adams. I think this is going to be a big struggle for the Packers and the Cardinals should be able to come out fairly easy in this week eight matchup. I have the Cardinals in this one. Pain. Pain is all we know for Packers fans, right? Well, Next up, we have the Carolina Panthers taking on their division rival, Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons have actually looked pretty solid as of late. After that trip to London, it seems like they have figured some things out. Cordero Patterson actually leading the backfield over Mike Davis, taking rushing attempts away and doing receiving out of the backfield, which is obviously what he's most known for. Uh, Matt Ryan seems to have found a really solid weapon to offset Kyle Pitts and Calvin Ridley. In fact, Kyle Pitts has benefited greatly from this, seeing way more targets, way more receptions, and opening up the middle of the field quite nicely. Back-to-back -back games over 100 yards. I expect that to continue. The Panthers are reeling right now. This offensive line is just absolutely abysmal. Nothing good to say about the Panthers, literally since we told them Literally, since we made a video talking about how they could be one of the best teams in football, they have been one of the worst. It's just our timing, of course. But nonetheless, the Falcons will come out on top in this one. Next up, we have the Bengals making their way to the New York Jets in what's going to be an absolute blowout. The Bengals, the number one team in the AFC right now. Crazy to say, to say that but they are, and the Jets, the worst team in the AFC. The Cincinnati Bengals should have a very easy time. Joe Burrow is going to be slinging this ball. Joe Mixon is going to run all over him, and this is going to be another 54-13 to 13 blowout like we saw that the Patriots have last week. The Bengals are going to roll over the Jets in Week 8. Next up, we have the Los Angeles Rams going down to Houston to take on the Texans. The Texans who are in the midst of trying to shop Deshaun Watson before next Tuesday's deadline for the trades. It, listen, the Texans are in shambles right now. Davis Mills is just not the guy that they are missing to Rod Taylor greatly. And this offense is just stymied week in and week out. The, not much that they have been able to do in the Los Angeles Rams coming with, obviously, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, and company. This is going to be one hell of a matchup. I love the Rams in this one, and this is my lock of the week. The Rams will come out on top over the Texans. In our next matchup, the Miami Dolphins making their way to Buffalo this time. In their first matchup, the Buffalo Bills held them to zero points. And the Miami Dolphins are 1-6 on the season, with their last two losses being the Jaguars and the Falcons. This is not going to be a good week for Miami. I don't think that Tua is going to have a week that could potentially save him from being traded for Deshaun Watson. I believe that the Buffalo Bills are going to have a very similar outcome to their last game in what's going to be an absolute blowout. The Buffalo Bills know them very well being divisional opponents, and the Bills are going to have a very easy home victory this week. Next up, we have the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Detroit Lions, and the Lions have been very competitive in all of their games so far, really taking it to the teams they played, including the Los Angeles Rams. They, the Lions put everything out there, fake punts, 
onside kicks, literally everything they could think of on all facets of the field, they did it. And they, they still came up just short, but that was against the Rams. Now the Eagles come to town, and I think that the Lions are hungrier than ever. The Eagles, they, they have their fair share of issues as well, but they're a pretty strong team, especially offensively with Devonta Smith, Jalen Rager, and Kenneth Gainwell. I believe that this Falcons team is going to be able to put up points. However, I have the Lions getting their first victory of 2021 against the Eagles. They are hungry. They saw what they did against the Rams. I believe they're going to be able to do the same against the Eagles, and they're going to come out on top in a very slight margin of victory. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers making their way to Cleveland. The first time these teams are facing off this year. This is always one of the best rivalries we have every year. They always split the matchup, and this is a little bit different. The Pittsburgh Steelers had a slow start, but it seems like they're starting to feel themselves out right now. Coming off the bye, the Cleveland Browns dealing with a ton of injuries. However, it does look like Baker Mayfield and Nick Chubb will be making their return, and that's going to help them out a ton. So the Cleveland Browns are getting closer back to full strength, and I think that's going to help them out a ton. They should have a fairly easy time. The Pittsburgh Steelers offense, they, they've had their issues, and I believe that the Browns are the team to absolutely expose them. And the defense for the Browns, they've had their, their poor moments recently, but I believe that they're going to definitely put it together to get a big win over the Pittsburgh Steelers in Week 8. Next up, we have the San Francisco 49ers who are still drying off after their Sunday night game, but nonetheless, they head to Chicago and the Bears are reeling right now after that 38 to three blowout loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think Justin Fields is still trying to figure out why he's in Chicago and how he can leave without anybody noticing because he did not look like he wanted to be there. Just every time the camera panned over to him on the field, he just looked lost. And it's not going to get much better as the 49ers come in with their stout defense. Jimmy Garoppolo is back. Debo Samuel is torching defenses left and right. The Chicago Bears are going to put up a little bit more of a fight than three points, but the 49ers will definitely take this one. Next up, we have the Tennessee Titans making their way to the Indianapolis Colts, the two top teams in the AFC South right now. The Colts have been, you know, coming back after a poor start to the season. Carson Wentz looks like he's starting to take command of this offense, and they actually have a team that can compete. The Tennessee Titans, however, are just playing on a different level. Derrick Henry is on an MVP tear, and I don't know if the Tennessee Titans are the team that anybody can really deal with right now. The, the defense for them has been a huge surprise recently. They had a lot of stars missing from the beginning of the season. Now that they're getting them back, you finally see the Mike Vrabel defense we've all been waiting for if they can keep up and i expect them to the indianapolis colts are not going to have a shot in this one the tennessee titans are going to have a big win over their division rival as the tennessee titans seem to be the kryptonite for the buffalo bills we see another game where there might be a little kryptonite here the new england patriots travel out west to sofi stadium take on the los angeles chargers and the chargers have not fared well against bill belichick and the patriots in recent memory when you take a look at their last two games even as early as last year you saw the cam newton led patriots blew out the chargers 45 to nothing this was not even a close game there was scoring on every single facet of the game and the patriots just dominated from start to finish well the patriots are much better than they were last year and the chargers are roughly about the same mike williams gotten a little more involved in the offense but they're roughly about the same type of team that we thought they were I actually have the Patriots on this one. I believe they're going to win this one. They're going to keep it on the ground. Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, Brandon Bolton, maybe even JJ Taylor gets involved. I think there's going to be a lot of room in the running game for the Patriots here. I think they're going to keep time of, time of possession on their side, and they're going to walk out of Los Angeles with yet another victory. The Patriots on top in this one. That's a big win for the Patriots, but what's not a surprise is our next matchup. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers making their way to New Orleans in another divisional matchup the first time these two are facing off. Jameis Winston finally getting his revenge game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Look, it's not going to be a revenge game because that's one of the worst teams uh, overall that I've seen so far this season. Jameis Winston led Saints maybe getting wins, but barely by the skin of their teeth, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have no mercy for their 
opponents, especially the New Orleans Saints, who are their biggest rival. And I, I think Tom Brady's ready to make a statement against Jameis Winston, saying, this is my team now, and I'm not giving it back. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to absolutely roll over the New Orleans Saints in what is my lock of the week. This is going to be an absolute blow, and I can't wait to see the Tampa Bay Buccaneers get one over on Jameis Winston. Definitely payback for last year and more payback coming here as the Washington football team take on the Denver Broncos in what is an interconference matchup we see in the late stage of the four o'clock games on Sunday. The Washington football team have started to figure some things out. Antonio Gibson is MIA though from this offense. I want to see him get going against this Broncos defense. We, we've seen Terry McLaurin really tear things up. Curtis Samuel also MIA. Taylor Heineke has to get things going and he can't lead the team in rushing every single week with 80, 90 yards rushing. So I, I want to see them get more involved and the back end of this defense really needs to get things going. The Jerry Judy looks to be coming back for the Broncos. So this passing offense is going to be even more potent. Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke, doesn't matter who's starting on, under center. The Broncos are struggling right now with that position and somebody's got to pull away. Otherwise, the Broncos are going to struggle as a whole i actually have washington coming out on top in this one and in our sunday night matchup we have i think the game of the week the dallas cowboys against the minnesota vikings in what's going to be an absolute offensive shootout on both sides it's really going to come down to the last possession i truly mean that in this one both defenses have had their bright spots but these offenses are just so powerful there is not enough defense to keep up with them. And I believe that the Minnesota Vikings being the home team coming off their bye, the Dallas Cowboys too, but I really believe in the Minnesota Vikings to get an upset victory at home over the Dallas Cowboys. They have been one of the teams kind of flying under the radar as they've had some, some bad losses this season, but they've held up with some of the best teams in the league, almost beating the Arizona Cardinals earlier in the year. I think that they get the job done against the Dallas Cowboys. They know what's in store for them. They know how to attack this team as the game plan has been set in front of them from other matchups. I really believe that the Minnesota Vikings have what it takes to get a big win over the Dallas Cowboys in week eight. Well, so far, based on our predictions, the only team in the NFC East getting a win would be Washington. And that comes into Monday Night Football where the Giants could turn that around but they're not going to because they're facing the Kansas City Chiefs. And for all of the struggles that the Chiefs have had this year, they're not as bad as the New York Giants. It's just simply not the case. Saquon Barkley may come back, but even still, he's going to be limited in reps. He's not going to have the full aspect of this offense prepared for him. And on top of that, we may see Kenny Galladay, doubtful. We're going to see some sort of offense from this team which they're going to be able to score against the Chiefs, don't get me wrong, but the Chiefs are also going to put up points against this porous secondary that the New York Giants are trouting out there. So at the end of the day, this is going to be an ugly game, but the Chiefs will come out on top, and I, I can almost guarantee that. Yeah, it, it's going to be a good game. I, I believe that, especially if Kadarius Tony plays for the New York Giants, this is going to be a lot closer than some people think, but I do believe the Kansas City Chiefs are the stronger team. Honestly, I think this could be a changing of the guard from Tyree Kill to Kadarius Tony. To me, the two are very similar players, played very similar style, and I think that Kadarius Tony is going to end up being the next hot wide receiver in the NFL for the next few years. The New York Giants have so many weapons. If they can really put it together, overall, they, they have a bright outlook for the rest of the season. But right now, the Kansas City Chiefs, have the tools around them. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyree Kill. They have the guys who have proven they can do it, and that's what you need going into this matchup. So I really like the Kansas City Chiefs here. I think Jamar Chase and Jalen Waddell might have something to say about that, but no. regardless, no. Uh, yeah, I, I think... Uh, I, I, listen, I, I like the Chiefs in this one, but I want to hear what you guys think. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of our predictions. Let us know if you think we got your team right or if we had them losing, why we should reconsider. Let us know in the comments down below. All right, well, that's going to be all for now. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. We go live every single day. That'll be all. Peace and love.